Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Wayfarers of the South Tigris. This is a one to four player board game that takes roughly about an hour to an hour and a half to play for ages 13 and up by Garfield Games. In Wayfarers, you're going to be basically doing one of three actions on your turn. You'll be rolling dice, placing dice onto locations on your game board. You will be taking workers that you start with and placing them down on cards to perform actions, or you'll be taking your dice off of your locations that you rolled and placed onto and re-rolling them and putting them back on top of your board or off of your board so that you can once again place them onto your actions and resting. Your objective, well, you want to scribe. You want to go from one side of the board to the other getting to the very end. When you do that, that's what will trigger the end of the game and you will score points. You're going to be scoring points in a number of various ways and I'll describe the basic idea of how to set the game up, how to play, and of course our review for this wonderful game that has quite a lot going for it, but is also simple in nature. All right, let's go and talk about the basic idea of setup. Now, I'm just going to remind this really quick because there are quite a few better videos that do this out there. One of them is the uh, Dice Tower game uh, video that does it pretty well, and there's another one, Meeple University, does it pretty good as well. But in the game, uh, Wayfarers of the South Tigris, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be setting up the main game board. It comes into three different pieces and you just put them side by side. They connect, you'll know which ones go with which. There are also going to be five decks of cards. You're going to have these villagers here, which you're going to place down on the top left hand side, shuffled, and then you'll deal out four cards. Uh, this is the sky. You'll shuffle up on the top right and you'll deal out four, uh, four cards as well. Over here on the very end, you'll shuffle and you'll deal out these guys. Um, these are like, they look like little maps. Uh, they're called something I can't remember. Uh, the bottom left is the land tile. You'll shuffle these guys up and deal four out. And the bottom right is the sea. You'll do the same there as well. The main game board, you're going to put all your tokens on the board. You'll start with uh, the pink upgrades and you'll put each unique one down onto the 10 spaces. Then you're going to put all the rest of the tokens equal to the number of players. So the green ones you'll put down on the green spaces, two if you're playing a two player game for each of the different slots, uh, two yellow ones for each of the yellow slots, two blue ones and two black ones. Now if you play three or four players just increase those amounts. Uh, then you're also going to take these square tokens are a little bit larger and you'll put them on the empty spaces in the middle of each of these little sections. They're going to be blank spaces where you'll place them down. And finally you'll take these green workers, you'll put them down on the green workers spaces in the middle of the track on the lines. This is how you're going to be gaining these guys. And then finally you'll take your score markers and you'll put them on the very far left hand side. You'll get your game mat here and then based on what order you're playing you're going to uh, give each player a certain number of influence on these three different areas here. Now this is what the end of the game is going to look like obviously. Um, but when you start off, you're going to be getting a certain number of coins, a certain number of these supplies, a certain number of workers that you can obtain, um, and then you're going to be starting off with a bunch of influence that you'll be putting onto these little church areas here. Your main game board is going to be much smaller than what you see here. It's actually going to look like this, and this is going to give you uh, a land tile. It's going to give you a water tile, it's going to give you a sky tile, and it's going to give you a villager to work with. Uh, you'll also want to have this main game board here. This has scoring rules for the end of the game and your caravan. This is where you're going to be placing down upgrades that will give you bonuses and allow you to use your dice in different areas on your game board that you normally couldn't use them on. And uh, that's pretty much about it. There's going to be a certain number of dice that are going to be start you're, start you're going to start with, and the rest will go down on the board here. And as you move along, you will gain these dice. Um, and yeah, but that's pretty much it. I mean, I'm not going to go through the whole concept of, of showing you how to set it up because there are review videos that just do that specifically. Uh, but let's go ahead and just get into gameplay. I think that's a good enough idea of setup. Okay, in the game Wayfarers, what you'll do is one of three actions, like I explained. You'll start with rolling whatever dice you have. And in the beginning of the game, you'll technically start with three dice. You'll roll those three dice. You'll put them somewhere down on uh, your player area, or what I like to do is put them on the numbers of your player boards here. And then you're going to decide to do one of three things. 
Number one is you'll take a die and put it onto a die space. And you can only do that if you meet the requirements. And in order to meet the requirements, you'll have to have certain types of symbols on your caravan. You wanna do the telescope action, you'll have to have a die that has a telescope symbol under it. Or you wanna do a, a pigeon action, you'll have to have a die that has a pigeon under it. If it's a blank space, you can just simply do it as long as you pay the cost, etc., etc. And you can place them on any of these things that you have. And as you go throughout the game, you're going to gain more and more of these. Uh, usually they're going to let you gain some type of card. One's going to let you gain a villager card. One is going to let you gain the uh, the land card. One is going to let you gain the water card. And they're all going to have costs. The camel one space over here is going to make you pay two supplies. And as long as you have a die that has a camel on it, which is it starts with a one, you're going to be able to get a card and a coin. Other side is the same thing, but, we, but instead of a coin, you're just going to get one water card. And you'll be placing them down, which is kind of cool. It's like a tab builder so you'll be placing cards from one uh, side across land is always going to go from the left side of your playing board on your tableau and it'll continue moving left the water will always go to the right underneath each land you can put a villager as you pick them up these are the green cards and uh, as long as they meet the requirements, most of them require you to have a certain type of land in order to place them on. So for instance, this scholar says you have to have a book or a uh, I don't know, this looks like a, a science facility, and this has the science facility, so you can go ahead and place her under here. It will give you a bonus for the rest of the game as long as you use that space. And the same is said for this other side here. It could be uh, when you rest, you'll get a bonus, or when you use a specific location, you'll get a bonus. The night skies are your victory conditions. It's how you score points at the end of the game. Some of them will require you to gain more of the same type of card. Others will require you different complex as aspects like, oh, you'll score one point for each, uh, for this card and for each of these symbols that you have. Uh, whenever you get a set of three of a specific symbol, you'll score points. Points, and so you're trying to build this night sky to score points. It's really the only way you score points in the game as well. And at the very top here is multipliers. You'll get these guys sparingly. Most of the time it'll just be either from a card that you purchase and build and it'll give you a one-time effect to get one of these cards, or it'll be from the main game board as you scribe across here. Uh, so yes, the main two actions are to place a die out or you place a worker out. Now there's a boatload of worker actions. I'm not gonna get into all of them, but take a worker that you have. There are three different types of workers and place them down, place one down onto any of the sections you're able to place them down. Green workers can go here, yellow and green can go here, uh, blue and green up here, and then no workers here. Um, you can, if you would like, uh, take part in any of the actions underneath the card that you place the worker on. You place a green worker here, you can go ahead and take the action down below here, and this will stay here. So workers don't come back at any point to you uh, like as an action, like dice will. Uh, but whenever you purchase a card with a worker on it, you'll get it back. So whenever you take a card like this townsfolk, this translator, and you put it underneath one of your land cards, this worker will come back. But otherwise, placing in a worker is just gonna give you the action on the game board above the card that you're placing it on. And so you're gonna find out that worker's gonna start stashing themselves onto the board. You'll be going out and taking your turn, placing one on here, getting the action, and so on and so forth. These actions are, will give you things like upgrades to place on your caravan. They're going to give you influence on the different areas on the game board. Uh, they're gonna let you pick up these cards here, these night sky cards at a cheaper discount, and they'll let you draw from the top of this, these decks here, the land and the, the, the land and the ocean deck to uh, pick cards that you'll want that may not be available to you. But yes, if you want workers specifically to come back to you, you'll have to pick up those cards from some way, whether it be dice and purchasing them, or whether it be another worker allowing you to pick up a different card. And the final action is resting. Now you only should do this action when you only have one or zero dice left. After you've placed a, n a number of dice out onto your main game board, you'll have one left or maybe you'll have none left, in which case you can take them all back into your hand, re-roll them, and then place them down onto your game board once again on the numbers. And then you can go ahead and take rest actions. And rest actions, you will always have one, which is you're going to be able to scribe and gain a coin. And scribing is going to let you move your marker to the right of the game board as long as you fulfill the requirements 
gain bonuses and useful tokens throughout it as you continue. You'll be getting stuff to do so as long as you can pass it. You'll also, if you pass one of these, these little workers here, you'll get it and take it into your tableau area as long as you're the first person. And any other benefits, this one will give you a coin. Now, if you choose throughout the game, you can start getting other townsfolk that give you rest bonuses, and you can use these bonuses in any order that you'd like. I can go ahead and go, okay, I get two coins now, I get to move my, my, my influences over to this area here, I can move an influence from one area to another, etc., etc., and then your rest action's done. You get your dice back, and you're basically back in it with your dice. And if you have no workers left, if you've used them all, then you're going to have to go and purchase cards that have workers on them, place those cards under your land area, and get your workers back. And that's pretty much the idea of the game. Um, there are certain unique abilities in the game, which you'll be allowed to use your influence on these different little areas here that will score, uh, that will give you things like you can move these dice around on your caravan to make sure that you can fit the symbols and requirements on the game board here. Uh, you're going to be able to spend influence down here to gain symbols that you might not have, or up here you're going to be able to basically scry scribe again, move again on this track as long as you're able to. But you'll get stuck at one point or another until you have the requirements that you need that are met. And then you'll score points. You're gonna score points for the different symbols that you've acquired throughout the game, the different uh, bonus obje objectives at the top here, as well as the multipliers here. You're gonna score points for each area that you control at the end of the game in these little locations, and so on and so forth. And that's it. Whoever is the winner, it, whoever has the most points is the winner. Getting to the end of this track is just going to end the game. Everybody gets one more turn, including that last player. And then you score all this stuff, and you see who wins the game, Wayfarers of the South Tigris. There's a lot to this game, but it's actually quite simple. Anyway, uh, there are way better examples of how this game is played. If you're looking for that, move on to one of those videos. Let's just talk about my review. So Wayfarers is one of those games that does a hell of a lot with a hell of a little. Now, you're only taking one of three actions. Place a die out onto a space, do what that space says, and get it and pass. Or you can go ahead and Take a worker from your supply, place it on a card you're able to perform the action on the bottom of the on the bottom of the board or top of the board, wherever it is next to that card. And then finally, taking your dice back, getting your rest actions, and that's it. Those are the three things you can do. But there are a lot of options that you can take. And throughout the game, you'll be getting more options. Just to start the game off, you're gonna have four, five, six different dice actions with certain requirements. You'll need to meet those requirements. In order to do so, you'll have to find upgrades from the main game board, put them down onto your caravan, and have to meet the different requirements on your dice. And I love that. I love the idea that uh, you can slowly build up to what you want to build up. You can take risks. Um, you can start maneuvering your dice and setting up combos on your caravan. You can start adding victory points onto your caravan and just working with certain types of die rolls and utilizing influence to move your dice around. There's a lot that works with this dice aspect of the game. And then the workers are cool too. Like workers, for instance, are not necessarily like a worker placement. Instead, they're kind of like a bonus action of sorts that give you benefits you would normally maybe not get on your main board here. Your workers are technically like your dice. This is a Euro game, um, but these workers are just going to let you do things like, oh shoot, I really need a land card right now, and I uh, I currently can't get one because the space that has a land card on my game board is filled with my die. So I can go ahead and move this guy over here. I can spend the resources required, whatever it says on there, and then I can go ahead and pick three cards here and choose one of them and put it on my game board. Uh, and normally I couldn't do that if I didn't have that yellow worker. Good thing I grabbed that card that had the yellow worker on it at one point or another. Or maybe I want to get a blue upgrade. I can go ahead and simply put a character over there and I can grab a blue upgrade for the cost. And everything has a cost on it next to it to see what it's costing. Whenever, whenever you pick up a card except for the two main land decks, uh, land cards, there's a cost whether it be the villagers up here, it all is very straightforward. There is a boatload of symbols in this game, and your first probably four or five rounds are going to be confusing. You'll be like, what's this symbol do? What's that symbol do? Well, on the back of this book here, it's going to tell you all the different symbols in the game. So you can be like, oh, I forgot. What does this mean? Oh, it's three points for a comet, and if you have the most, you'll score four points. Okay, how about this one here? Uh, this one says if I have a basic unit up upgrade tile and I have a space upgrade tile times two, this then becomes a times two bonus for multipliers. 
And so the back of this book is going to give you all the information you need, all the different symbols is all you need throughout the game because it's you don't really need a player aid for this game. There's only three different actions you can take, but what you really do need is iconography and it tells you that very well. Um, and so yeah, I, that's probably the only thing I'd say that's going to trip you up in this game. The actions are very simple, resting is very, very, very simple, um, but the variety of things you can do is great. I feel like this game shares a little bit in common with Scythe, which is kind of weird. Scythe is an area control combat style game, and uh, this is more of a Euro, but the, this, what they have in, in, in common is there are a certain number of actions that you can take that have what seem to be very complex different aspects that you can, you can do, and uh, you have lots of different things that you can do, but at the very core, it's, it's very simple. There's these three things you do, and then afterwards you pass. And you only, one of the three things, and then you pass, and the next player goes, and you just keep going until somebody hits the end of this track. You could choose to push along this track as fast as you'd like. You can choose not to push along this track and focus on your tableau and let somebody else in the game. There's no benefit or, or negative to doing that if you're kind of watching to see when the game ends, and as long as you try and stay ahead, knowing when you're ahead and when you're behind is very important in this game, and you have to watch the other players' boards, see what they're going for, see what you're going for, and determine what cards you need. Now, yes, there is some player interaction in the game. It's, it's very light. You're not going to be messing with a player's board or their tokens, but there's a lot of resources that are going to be taken that you might want. There's spaces that are going to be on the game board that you might need to go past in order to get certain workers. And if you don't have those spaces anymore, maybe you've planned on doing a specific thing, best laid plans and all, you know, they will be disappeared and you'll get screwed. It, it, it can happen. Uh, it's not super common. I don't feel like this game is one of those aggressive style games. It's more about picking the spaces you need as soon as you can get them making sure their players aren't going for them, and if they do, you'll need to change your play style to make sure that you can get them before them. Um, and it's all about building this wonderful, long tableau. You'll need a lot of space for this game. All the artwork in this game is wonderful. I love the different character artworks. They're kind of like, I don't know, I don't know if they, they're weird. They kind of remind me of like uh, Villages of Valeria, I suppose, the artwork. It's kind of that like cool art deco style um, character art. The lands are great. And as you place them, it, it starts to feel like you actually have this like a muriel that you are making when it comes to the different uh, lake areas and your boats. It actually looks really, really freaking cool. And then the night sky is above and you start seeing like uh, the different planets and meteors coming across. And then you have your caravan at the very top, which is the only thing that I guess kind of maybe it's like a not really a caravan. Maybe it, sh it should have been like a solar system or something like that or like a solar map or something. I don't know. But overall, this artwork is great. The quality of the components is wonderful. All the pieces feel great. Utilizing your different pieces of influence is cool. And the fact that you can place them on cards and gain benefits. And there's some interaction when players try and take a card or use an ability on a card that has one of your influence. They'll have to give you a coin or a supply. Um, it seldom happens in a two-player game. Maybe three and four players is a little bit more likely. Um, but yeah, overall, this game is wonderful. It's a lot of fun. It's complex, and you might have some analysis paralysis if you're like that, but uh, because there's so many options in the game, but it's also very straightforward as to what it's saying that you can do. And most of the time, you'll only have certain dice that will align with certain type of abilities, and having to find them is the challenging part, and going, what could I have done? And you'll see that, and you'll realize there are different things that you could have done, but for the most part, you kind of have an idea of like what your scope of, of what is available to you. There's a lot of game in this game. It comes with an automaton mode as well. So if you want to play one player, you can do that as well. And utilizing these cards here. There are a ton of characters we never even got to in multiple games. Um, yeah, in the last game, we just played this game. This is a finished version. I hadn't played two players, so I wanted to play two players as well. And we still had all these cards left over. Uh, for all of the decks, so you're gonna be running into this game and playing this quite a few times. You're gonna always want to jump back in. My wife wanted to jump back in right away um, when we played four players, and she's like, I need to play this again. Now that I understand it, I know how to do it, and I, I wanna play it so I can beat you. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, quality, art, cool design, everything makes sense. 
there's just a lot of complexities to the game if you're not a fan of potential AP. Um, but otherwise, yeah, this is a great Euro and it's a lot of fun. And I think if you like these type of games, these type of tableau building Euros, you're going to love Wayfarers of the South Tigris. Uh, I'm gonna keep this game. Yeah, I'm gonna keep this game in my collection. I really, really enjoyed it. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Board Game Review the game, uh, Wayfarers of the South Tigris. If you're interested in picking the game up, there's a link down below in the description. You can also go ahead and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Don't forget to also go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the bell notification button. If you have watched more than one of our videos here, then this is the second video or third video. Maybe we've earned your subscription. We do greatly appreciate it. All right, guys, that's pretty much all I've got for you this time. There's a live stream, 6.30 p.m. PST, and Wednesdays is 6.30 p.m. PST as well. Sundays and Wednesdays. Sundays on all platforms and Wednesdays on whatnot. That's all I got for you. And as always, I look forward to traveling the seas, the land, and the sky with you. And Wayfarers of the South Tigris, next time.